and healing from the other side. Welcome to Messages of Hope with Suzanne Giesman. Listen, they're all around you, close as a thought or a memory. Messages of Hope. Messages of Hope. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode. I love listening to that intro hope and healing from the other side. That's always my goal, but I know we are going to accomplish that goal today with my guests. I can't wait for you to get to know better my really beautiful friend, Lisa Wilcoxon, who I'm going to bring in right now. Hey, Lisa, welcome to the show. Hi, Hi everyone. Hi, Suzanne. What an honor to be here. Well, people are going to get to know you well, but we were sharing information about this show with the members of Helping Parents Heal. So a lot of them already know you. I hope a lot of them will be tuning in today, but those who don't know you, hopefully will be as impressed as I am with your story and the growth that you've achieved over the past few years, but unfortunately the hard way. So that's actually the truth for many people. Uh, I'm already doing most of the talking, but that's about to end because I would like you well, let me just first tell people who you are in my words. I don't like to read people's biographies. Lisa is a normal person like I thought I was, right? <laughs> and she is a mom. She's a mom to two sons, but both of her sons are across the veil. And we're going to talk about that. She, I believe, has seen spirits or was seeing spirits when she was younger and set that aside. But now she has opened up the most amazing ability as a medium. And I cannot speak highly enough about her ability. So that's what we're diving into. Lisa's story, how she turned that ability as a medium back on and how she's using it now. How's that sound, Lisa? Oh, my gosh, Suzanne. That's that's the truth of it, isn't it? It is. Yeah, thank so what you so much for having me on. Oh, well, we're all going to be grateful by the end of the show. What is the uh, best place to start? The guides say start at the beginning. So you saw spirits as a child? I saw a spirit when I was 13 years old. I, I truly thought I was crazy. There were four beings in the corner of my bedroom and they came for, I, I recall it being about 10 nights and I couldn't hear them. I could see them talking to each other. And I truly just thought, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm just losing my mind. And shortly thereafter, they showed up in the gymnasium of my junior high middle school where I was the basketball manager and oh and the gentleman said and I heard him this time you are not ready yet we will be back and Ooh, I, I have goosebumps <laughs> yeah wow oh I see now see I didn't know your whole story I thought you were like so many who see them when they're five years old and they're the Im imaginary friends so four of them and how long did they stick around well, I once I pulled the covers over my head, I couldn't see them anymore. I saw them objectively, which of course means outside of myself. And there were two men and two women. And since in conversation with my beloved aunt, I believe two of the women were uh, two of my aunts who I had never met generations back, who she said also had this gift. And I also now know that one of the men is my guide. So I think that's wonderful. Wow. And could you describe them like era? Or well, you know, if I were to say era, it, you would think I watched a little bit too much Little House on the Prairie. The women <laughs> had on velvet petticoats and hats with big pluming feathers in them. And the men wore very plain, simple brown tweed suits with derbies. They wore derbies and derby wound up being extremely significant in me putting this pattern together and seeing just the miracle of how this life has played out. All right, I'm making a note here to ask about the Derby later. Okay, <laughs> cool. So you literally pulled the, the uh, blankets over your head and they went away. Huh? I really did. I, I truly thought, oh my gosh, I'm crazy. So, yeah. Did you tell anybody? I didn't tell anyone. I really didn't tell anyone. It was the age of puberty. It was the age of, you know, just 
just trying to figure yourself out as a child, as a preteen anyway. And, but I, I will tell you, I will never forget it. I will never forget it. It was a gift. Yeah. And very solid. I'm envious that it was objective out there that you saw them because you can't dismiss that. Huh? That's true. You know what's interesting, Suzanne, is I recall now my bedroom was bright yellow. Everything was yellow, which is, of course, you know, where my soul resides in my in my solar plexus. And and my bed was yellow. My carpet was yellow. My draperies were yellow. My walls were yellow. It was oh. it, I just think of how divine it all was and just not knowing, believing we live in this three dimensional world, you know. Yeah, and that was just an early hint, something you could link back to when the time came when you were ready. So fast forward and you tell us anything you want about your, your marriage, your children. You just take this story where it needs to go. Oh, my goodness. That's such an open script. It Let's is. Um, yeah, but you're guided. <laughs> you know. Absolutely. The story of, the story of Lisa is the story of, of my beautiful children. Um, I, I'm in my second marriage. My first marriage, we had a beautiful little boy, Michael, Michelangelo. He was named after my father, Angelo. And Michael, at the age of one month, had a toxic reaction to his DPT shot and became severely disabled. Uh, for 12 years, he had seizures. He never spoke or walked or talked. And I know that it was being Michael's mom was 12 years of practice of my intuition, 12 years of practicing clairsentience, claircognizance. Um, because you was, had to figure out what he needed, huh? Exactly, wow. exactly. And I remember taking him into the doctor and saying, I think his leg is broken. And they would say, why? I said, he's not moving his leg. And he hid it in the shower having a seizure. And he was fed by a, a G-tube, a gastrostomy tube into his stomach. And I remember one time just having this, it was almost as if I was having these terrible stomach pains. And I took him in and the gastroenterologist was just shocked how I could have known because the tube had poked in through his stomach wall. And just things like that, that, you know, that's what parents do. That's they want to know about their children. We call it the proverbial eyes, eyes in the back of your head. You know, my third eye popped up. My third I just eye had that thought while I was walking earlier. I was even going to put a post on Facebook about eyes in the back of your head. Amazing. Well, there's, yeah. That's one of those coincidences, isn't it? Yeah, it's just a coincidence. <laughs> that's yeah. Right. Okay. So when Michael was six. I had my second child, Anthony, and very shortly thereafter got divorced. So I had these two children um, on my own and met Rick about three years into that. Anthony was three when I met Rick. And shortly after I met Rick, when Michael was 12, he very suddenly got aspiration pneumonia. For those who don't know, it means that something went down his airway food went down his airway, even though he was G-tube fed, um, we would give him tastes or he would get reflux. And, and within a matter of 24 hours, I was being told that his lungs were full and there was nothing we could do. And he was suddenly, had suddenly crossed the veil. And that was just such a shock to me. Were you married to Rick at the time? I was not. I was not married to Rick, no. And I turned everything I had into Anthony at that point. Anthony became just everything to me. Rick used to call me what is now termed a helicopter parent. But of course, I now know I also had a knowing there. And I used to always say, I think Anthony came to save my life. And this was before, uh, before I even knew what I know now. And Anthony, he was just amazing. He was, he was a brilliant kid. He was loved sports he he gosh he just had so many friends he had just started college at asu and he went to a party where he That's had a, arizona state university. arizona state university he went to a party on a synthetic drug um took a synthetic drug and immediately had a heart attack and but you know suzanne three days before anthony crossed i was in my bedroom and this was 
first time I saw anything other than those four people in my bedroom when I was 13 and my mother appeared in my closet. Now my mother had crossed four months before Michael crossed in the year 2000. And when I saw her in my closet, I was stunned. I saw her objectively and she was crying. She just appeared and she was crying. And I came out of my closet. I said, Rick, I just saw my mom in my closet. She was crying. And I don't know what shocked me more that I saw her, or that she was crying. Um, that's when I thought, you know, angels, as Rumi says, angels were on clouds with harps. And I didn't understand that. Three days later was when I got the call that Anthony was in the emergency room. Come quickly. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to interpret that. What do you make of that visit? Well, that visit was one of the biggest gifts I could have ever gotten. Um, that was twofold. My mother letting me know she wasn't crying because there's sadness across the veil. She was crying to let me know she knew my heart was about to break. But additionally, it made me realize, having seen that vision three, three days prior, that there would have been nothing I could have done that would have changed the circumstances of what happened with Anthony. It had already been done. That really speaks to what you and I deal with a lot, this whole concept of soul contracts and destiny and decisions made at a level above our own that we don't always see. Indeed. There were other times um, when he was, he was two years old. I remember tucking him into bed and he said, you know, mommy, I waited forever to come and be your baby. Oof. And when he was four, I picked him up from daycare and he was in his little car seat in the back seat and had big old crocodile tears coming down his cheeks. I said, what's the matter, baby? And he said, mama, when I'm 18, I'm going to leave you. And I'm so sad. And I said, well, when you're 18, you're a big boy and you go to college, we'll, you'll be fine. And what four-year-old knows you go to college when you're 18? But the biggest was about six months before he crossed, we were getting ready for his dorm room. We had just gotten back from buying something at a department store and we pulled into the garage. It was, it was very dark. And he said, mom, I need to talk to you. I feel like I'm going to die. I need you to watch out for me. Okay, mom, please watch out for me. And he had a knowing, he had a knowing. How far apart were your two sons' transitions? Uh, let's see, six years, six years, six 12, years. 18 you, years. You already have been through this once and this is your remaining living child. How do you oh, deal with that? It was 12 years, it was 12 years. They were six years apart when Michael right. crossed, but it was 12 years from the time Anthony crossed to the time Michael crossed. Well, I'll just tell you right now, um, it was absolutely, certainly the dark night of my soul. Um, I remember I wanted nothing to do with talking to him in spirit. I wanted him sitting at my kitchen table, okay. eating my spaghetti. I, I had people coming and telling me, oh, I saw a medium and they said this. And my stepmother said, oh, I saw Michael and Anthony at the end of the hall and they have beautiful angel wings and, and I just didn't want to hear it. So I understand. I did not come to where I am now easily whatsoever. Yeah, that, that leads me to Rick. Here you're in a new relationship with a man and just after you're together from what you said, your son dies and he was there for you, but I'm sure that's not what he thought he signed up for. And now 12 years later, your second son passes and now you're a medium. So we'll get back to Rick later. But uh, I remember when I met Rick, I don't think he was totally on board with mediumship at the time. Absolutely uh, not. In fact, yeah. your, visit, your visit with him was one of the instrumental um, things that helped change our marriage. So, ooh, ooh. Yeah. Okay, well, this is not about me, but I'm, I want to hear more about that, but maybe later. <laughs> yeah, that's very good. So we're all putting each other's path for a reason. Yes, we are. So where do we go next? You just keep going. 
yeah. oh my gosh, where to go, where to go? So I was, I, as I said, at this dark night of my soul and Rick had just gotten a job in Sedona. And so I went up there with him. I didn't want to, I didn't want to be home at our home in Scottsdale while he was working up there. And he said, Lisa, you've got to get some help. So I found a, a grief therapist in Sedona. And one of the first amazing things that happened was she was sitting at my kitchen table and asked me what Anthony's birthday was. And I told her and she lifted up her pant leg and she had the identical birthday tattooed on her ankle. Her daughter was born and died that same day. And so I, I would go to grief retreats and it was at those grief retreats that she held up there that that's when I really start seeing spirit and there was just no denying it. But did, was she, did she just know? So she was tuned in as well or did she? Not at all. She okay. deals with grief. She is a hardcore, uh, Rick calls her a first responder, trauma, grief okay. therapist. She's so that was just a generic question. And then it turns out that it's the same exactly. thing. Exactly. So she would hold these retreats. People would come from, from all over the world. And um, I was sitting there doing yoga at one of these grief retreats. And uh, all of a sudden, there was a young child there in front of me. And it was just something, Suzanne. He you was, mean objective spirit? Uh, spirit in front I, I want to just pause for a second and explain to everybody the difference I want all of you listening to picture an apple in your mind's eye not everybody can picture like that but most people can that's subjective vision objective is what Lisa's describing here that she sees that spirit person out in front of her how solid did they appear it's always different for those who have objective clairvoyance you know, it's such a, it was such a flash. They, they appeared pretty solid, pretty wow. solid. So it, mm -hmm. it just stunning. But he, this adorable little boy was in front of me and he had on a puppy dog mask and had his hands out like this. And he was saying, horsey, 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 horsey. And I thought, oh my gosh, I don't even know what to make of this. And so we finished our yoga. We went and had breakfast and came back. And the woman who was sitting next to me doing yoga was now standing with the facilitator of the yoga, showing her a picture on her iPhone of a new horse she had just purchased. And I asked her, oh, my gosh. I said, did your son have a puppy dog mask? And she said, yes, he did. She said, oh, my God. dog just chewed the nose off it right before I came here. It was his favorite toy. And so the evidence in the first things I saw, Suzanne, was for me. It was because I, what, what am I going to tell these people? Yeah. I, this was all just new to me. So I, I would tell them, you know, what I saw. I didn't in any way think I was doing mediumship or doing readings. It was literally, hey, I just saw this. And story after story that, that just blew me away. And it was other people's children that made me know that my children were okay. Huh. I connected to them far earlier than my own children. That was my next question. Yeah. And did you have, did you slowly gain that desire to connect with your own children? Or was it there all along, even though you wanted them here physically? Oh, it was there all along. Of course it was there all along. And I think, I think now on some level, I can say that, um, you know, perhaps if I were to sit and meditate on it, I was connected with my own children, but the grief, merging the grief into the awakening is a very delicate dance. It's an extremely delicate dance. And all of us are grief, whether it's from the loss of a beloved pet, who I, in my own heart, know are our children. They're just like our children. And for both of my children are in spirit, but my fur babies are my children as well. And so I, I know that for myself, I can say that. Um, grief is grief. And, but 
the truth is once you're aware of the reality, it's almost impossible to feel anything more than, than this incredible joy. When I so have I want of- you to tell people what that reality is. Okay. Who might be new to this. Once you're aware of the reality, it's almost impossible to feel that grief. What is that reality, Lisa? Well, the reality is we don't die. The reality is we're in a package. We are just absolutely in a package. And interestingly enough, I had a near-death experience when I was 19. I was having a CAT scan and I was um, in, being injected with the CT dye. And I kept telling the woman behind the window, I'm getting hot. I'm getting hot. I can't breathe. And just, I remember hearing her saying, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> And next thing I knew, I was over my body, seeing the blue light flashing. And the next thing I knew, I was in the hospital bed. And I always, I discounted that most of my adult life. I discounted that experience until I recognized a few years ago. You know how I know we survive is because as I was over my body, it was still me. I said, see, I told you so. And that, <laughs> So my personality, my consciousness yeah. survived. Yes. And it, once you know that, once you truly know that, as a parent, all we want to know is that our children are okay. And believe me, my boys are, are alive and well and doing all kinds of incredible things. Yeah, I've had the pleasure of tuning in to them for you before you were a medium. <laughs> At, at working as one and they were delightful so how about your own first connections with them oh gosh let me try and think back my connections with michael are very different than my connections with anthony michael is my son who had uh, severe disabilities um, special needs i'll call him when he was here and my connections with him are just as they were when when he was alive they are more through my clairs they're more a feeling that i can feel him around i believe that as a soul on a soul level his journey to come and be in that in that broken body he is a far he's on a far higher level than even me and my soul and he he's almost you know out there when i here how i explain it when I look at the night sky, Michael goes from horizon to horizon. That's where I see his face. When I see Anthony, he's a shooting star. He's yeah. just, he's busy. He's out there doing all kinds of things. But Michael is just like big, watches over, watches over all kinds of things. Beautiful. So today you are an amazing medium. I hear kudos feedback and the word amazing is what keeps coming up you're getting really good evidence which is what changes lives and for those of you who may be new to mediumship evidence are those things that the medium couldn't possibly know about your loved one across the veil i know that's part training for you lisa and part just what's coming through but I recall you coming to several of my classes before you ever started saying, I am a medium about yourself. And you were having some phenomenal experiences because you would leave the class like your head was going to explode. Like, I'm having this experience and I don't know what to do with it. Tell me about your awakening to these abilities and what it took for you to finally say, I need to follow this path. Oh, absolutely. I'd, I'd love to share that. I remember at one time you called me to Gasper because you would put, <laughs> you would put a slide up on your screen and I would constantly be oh, because I would have seen what, what you were showing on the screen and what you were putting all together so beautifully and magically making sense of all of it. For, for example, um, I recall I knew nothing about what a Merkaba was. I knew that when I meditated, which, which you, you actually gave me the, I believe it was the journey, which is your journey. Journey of consciousness meditation. Journey, yes. What an incredibly powerful meditation. I, I encourage everyone to do it. Well, that and, is 
that is available free on the gifts page on my website. So yeah. Wonderful. And I would talk to Anthony when when I would do this meditation and I would see all kinds of things in my mind's eye clairvoyantly. And I recall seeing a star of David and I thought, oh, I wonder if this is my guide like Suzanne talks about. Maybe my guide is Jewish. And I didn't know what a Merkaba was. And then I would sit sit in one of your events and and be shown the Merkaba. And I was just stunned that, oh my gosh, that's a Merkaba. And just once you start seeing things, the web, you can't go back. there's no. no going back. No. I recall one time after a conversation with you walking through my home in Sedona, which was Rick was still working there at the time. And it seemed almost as if I was walking outside of my own body and seeing this as a, just as a stage that had been set up oh, and yeah. seeing, seeing the patterns of sacred geometry in absolutely almost everything there is. And I want to just pause a second. People are saying, I, I can hear them. I always hear heard some of the community listening to this. And Merkaba is a sacred geometric shape that I talk about in my Serving Spirit Level 2 class. It's a little bit more advanced. It's, it's a meditative tool and we use it to help us maintain and obtain an expanded state of awareness. So now you're talking about sacred geometry and please continue. Absolutely. Um, I, I'm drawn to take this back to the question, um, when did my boys start talking to me? Because it was pretty much at the same time, Suzanne, when I was taking your courses and I started realizing it was my own boys talking to me. And yeah. then, then entered the guides and learning about our guides and learning about those who are always there for us. And um, golly, you're just going to have to direct me here because there's just so much I could say. I I recommend Suzanne's course to anyone who's interested in any of this. And I do, I'm going to go ahead and transition over to, um, then I went to Mavis. Yeah, I was just going to say, you know, I, I feel I opened the door for you. And then I always recommended that people study with the wonderful Mavis Patilla, who passed in August. But you then became a student of hers and just <sighs> blossomed. It was it was a combination of Mavis Patilla and her lovely partner, Jean Else. They had two completely different dynamics and just you know, I, I mentored with them for years and it was, it was just truly a life changing experience. The first time I stood in front of Mavis and to do a demonstration of mediumship, I just wanted to shrivel up and I have a real quick little story Thank I'd you. like to share. Oh, yeah. um, you were, you Mavis and Jean were hosting an event. I was going to say, I think I was there, right? In the villages. In oh, Florida. I know this story. I'm so happy you're going to share this one. Oh Good my God. Thing great story. <laughs> yeah. And there were wonderful people there who are now some of my closest, nearest and dearest friends. My my dear friend, Britta Grubin, invited me to come along. I had never heard of Mavis, to be honest with you. I'm on the West Coast and, and I just hadn't. And so the week was so difficult for me. I cried every night in my hotel room. I well, Mavis thought, was tough and you have, and she puts mm -hmm. you on the spot in front of people and absolutely yeah, broke down everything <laughs> broke down everything i thought i knew about mediumship and then of course through the years built it back up beyond what i ever could have imagined but i was sitting in the back of the room and i said to myself there there's a little story about a hippopotamus between me and anthony and so hippo is kind of like my secret word with him and I said to him, if I'm supposed to be a medium, I want to hear the word hippo. And of course, you're you're the one who taught me to ask for ask for signs like that. And I said, I want to hear the word hippo by tomorrow night when my flight leaves. Well, we broke for coffee and cookies about five minutes after that. And my dear friend Britta, our dear friend Britta, got up and came up to me and said, you know, I think I'm going to go take a quick nap. I was awake much of last night. I had the strangest dream. I was at Suzanne's house and there was a big hippo floating in her swimming pool. And it's just things like that 
that you just can't make, make that up. No, <laughs> no, you just can't. look at look at the web. There's the web. I mean, you may think you have the idea to ask for the sign of a hippo, right? But there's spirit, a one spirit. We don't have to say it was Anthony or Michael or or your guides, whoever it was. It's the one mind we all share that just said. We need this woman to be a medium. She's not going home crying, right? Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. Wow. Great sign. You know, it, it, you just reminded me of a story. Good. Um, we love when, the stories. Yeah. Something, Anthony had been across the veil about seven years, and something happened that upset me on a physical level, on a three-dimensional level about his time at ASU. And I said, Anthony, if you're trying to tell me this, mister, I need you to show me a sign. I need you to say, and I just thought of something. I need you to say snowbird. And I live in Arizona. So I thought, oh, well, that probably wasn't a good sign to ask for, but I was thinking, you know, a bumper sticker or something like that. So within an hour, I walked into a restaurant and my friend and her mother, her sweet little 96 year old mother in the walker, we were waiting for a table and there was only one table. She couldn't sit in a booth. And I was like, why is he making us wait here? I don't understand. And the host is standing there and then slowly out of the blue, this, the way the host says, I'll take you to your table now. And just as we started approaching, a man walked in the door with a t-shirt that said Snowbird on the back of it. And my friend hit me and she said, they always answer you. But that wasn't the miracle, Suzanne. The miracle was I sat down at the table and all of a sudden, and this was objectively again, Anthony was standing beside me. Oh, and man. he said, mom, mom, I need you to know, you did not tell me that word Snowbird. He said, Mom, I had already seen you walking into this restaurant. I, all, I get verklempt every time. I had already seen that. I dropped that word into your head. Mom, I'm right here. Have your life. I haven't gone anywhere. You're just on the ride like a roller coaster. And... There was absolutely no way I could deny what just happened nor the message he gave me. So to all of you who are out there in grief with broken hearts, listening to us who may be new to this, who may be thinking this is all just woo woo, or I may be trying to, you know, just make ourselves feel better. I'm telling you, it's so real it's and so it's real. so healing. And I just invite you to please have an open heart and an open just an openness to you and an open conversation with your loved ones lisa you've you've heard me share about that sign game you know i want you to give me the sign of uh and then i always used to explain that in that pause they're going to put in your head just like you said the sign that they know is coming and we think we got the sign. Well, my guides finally showed me it's really cumbersome to teach that way. So just make it easy and say, what sign are you going to show me that you're here? Oh, beautiful. Susan. You know, this shortcut. Because <laughs> they is have a big picture. Yeah. It is a shortcut. Yeah. And then it'll just come to you. It'll just come to you. Yeah. You're such a magnificent teacher. You truly are. You and, and I know... Beloved Mavis's teachings are still being presented with Jean and Annie Gee, and, yeah. and it's just yeah. absolutely amazing. Yep, and, and there's <sighs> some really cool stuff coming up to keep Mavis's spirit and teachings alive. I'll be part of it, and I'm excited to announce that coming down the road. But meanwhile, how did it feel to say, I'm ready to be a professional medium? Well, on one hand, it was very intimidating. And on the other hand, it was, I just knew it was my path. I just Calling. knew it. I yeah. did. I, ju I just knew it because one of the fundamentals Mavis teaches is that I do not work for anyone here. I work for people in spirit and I just need to trust that they will come. 
And I, I'll, I'll be the first to say, what, in fact, one of the nicest compliments someone wrote about me on Facebook was that I was unable to connect with their daughter, but I was very forthright about it. And they were just really grateful to me. Not every medium can connect with everyone. And ethics are so important in mediumship. And I know it's the people in spirit that trust my heart. And that's why I, I had no, no qualms whatsoever about stepping out. You know, we both know that in our heart, but we've both been trained by Mavis and went from, you know, I, I was Mavis trained until she said, now you're my friend and my colleague, but that, that initial teaching will always put her up here. She'll always be up there. But that, that right there, what you just said, that's Mavis Patilla and mediumship 101. The, the highest ethics, we're here to serve spirit. It's not about us. It's just, may we continue to impart that to all who do this work and who receive it. Thank you for that. I also want to add to that, that um, my, my readiness, shall I say, to step out and be a professional medium is 100% about opening hearts, about just spreading the word. Your loved ones have not left you. You, you do not need a medium to feel this connection with your loved ones. And yet there's no more incredible validation, even if it's, as you said, the eyes in the back of the head, oh, I had just thought of that. Even it's something as simple as that. Whatever helps you along your path to realize and recognize that your connection with, with those who you're so desperately grieving is still there. Absolutely. So you are an affiliate leader for two groups with Helping Parents Heal, your local chapter, is that right? And then? Um, no, actually they're both international chapters. Okay. I'm a co-affiliate leader with the lovely Irene Buvalides for a group um, for all our children or our only child are in spirit. And we have, gosh, over 350 members, I believe at this point. Wow. And it, it's just a wonderful, wonderful group of, of women and men. And I'm also co-affiliate leader for parents who have children with special needs who are in spirit wow. with an incredible man, Craig Nelson. And we have had a little break on our meetings, but we're starting back up on August. I believe it's August 4th. I'll have the first Monday. The meetings are going to be the first Monday of the month again. And that's uh, helping, helping parents. parents is my honor. Yes, it's yeah. my honor and my privilege. Truly. Well, you're also one of their, uh, what do you call it, a vetted by them as one of their providers, certified. Uh, certified as a medium with them. And I, I know that their process is very rigorous and you can trust any of the providers on there. But when I hear the feedback, and I've watched a few of your uh, live programs that you do with Helping Parents Heal and bring through children across the veil for the parents, you're getting such fabulous evidence and you're passing the test of what I consider the test of a good reading. That is that the person whose loved one you're bringing through walks away and says, oh my God, that was my loved one. That to me is the goal. I don't like when people walk away from a reading and say, well, I think that was them, but I'm not sure. It's, you know, when you work well with the spirit world, they leave no doubt. And you're doing that, Lisa. So I hope people will check out your website. I'm going to put it up here again, phoenixmedium.com. I want to talk about your medium in just a minute, but I believe you don't have a book yet, but I want to say not yet, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I've been concentrating on, on just getting the word out that, you know what? we can all be okay yeah that that book will be coming but meanwhile you'll be kept busy enough doing what really matters and that's like you said opening hearts and minds and showing people that love never dies so how about some of your favorite maybe give us two or three of your favorite stories of readings oh, that you goodness. did your, i call them those no other explanation stories my goodness my goodness Okay, let's we see. We can I'm, never hear I'm, this too much, can we, everybody? Yeah. I know. I, I'm just going to 
I don't even know which one. There's so many. Sometimes the most recent are are truly the amazing ones. I, I just have a delightful little boy, and I talk about him in my introduction as I begin most of my private sessions, because this was this was truly amazing. He was um, at the beginning of the reading. He came to me, he was 11 years old, and he was showing me himself playing Jenga, a life-size Jenga game. And he what was, is that? It, Jenga, it's where the, the, the wood sticks, but they have big ones. It's like a puzzle. Okay. And he was playing this Jenga game. And I told his mother, he's smiling and he's pushing it over. He's telling me he's pushing over this Jenga game. And she said, oh, he loved games. And the rest of the reading was just amazing. But the miracle was the next day. She sent me an email and she said, oh my gosh, Lisa, my son's middle school just emailed me to tell me they've selected his foundation to be the recipient of the spring middle school charity dance funds. All they want in return is for the foundation to purchase a life-size Jenga game for the kids to play at the school. Ah, goosebumps. <laughs> now, this beautiful young man was able to tell his parents, which, you know, had very little meaning to me. And even to his mom at the time, yeah. I know about my foundation and you can bet I'm going to be at that dance playing with my friends. I'm going to be the one to push that game over. And it's stories like that, that, that even blow me away. Just, just blow me away. It's stories like that, that, that require you to trust spirit because you know what you're seeing. Nobody knows what you're talking about. Then it comes to pass. And that's when we all can't deny he knew about that because of that higher perspective again. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it really is amazing. I have something else here right now. I hope you can see this. Um, there's a lovely young man in spirit. They're little little rubber duckies. Okay. And his mom sent them to me. And at the beginning of her reading, she said, I said, your son is here. I know you have a son in spirit. I said, your son is telling me he loves the rodeo. And she said, that's not my son. He had nothing to do with the rodeo. I said, well, I'm telling you, I can't... <laughs> this is just what I'm seeing. He's, he's showing me riding around on the rodeo and telling me love. She said he was a skateboarder. He didn't do any of that. And then she sent me a message after the reading and she said, Oh my gosh, I was just posting. She sells these little rubber duckies for his foundation. And she said, I was just posting because the morning of the reading, she had gotten in a new box of these little cowboys. And she said, my post said, I'm ready to rodeo. And oh. it, <laughs> just things that you just can't make up that make us know this is 100% our, our people, our loved ones, our husbands, our wives, our fathers, yeah. our mothers. That's what I, a point I wanted to make. You don't just connect with children. It's whoever shows up, right? From the spirit oh, world. Goodness. I remember one time I was doing a reading and my, my green screen was messing up. And I told the woman, I said, I'm sorry. I can't tell you what's wrong here with my green screen. But I literally, the only image I can find is of this grass. It's just a standard image for Zoom. And so I said, please forgive me. And I said, it's not very professional. And she said, oh my gosh. And she says, she was connecting with her dog and had on her desk a picture of her dog sitting in the grass, exactly like my green screen. Oh. <laughs> and I told her, your dog is showing me one of those little willow statues. I think they're called willow. They're like, they're carved out of wood. Willow tree. And willow tree statues mm -hmm. of of a person holding a dog and she went like this i have that one <laughs> raised it up in front of me oh and, yay 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 way to yeah. go yeah yeah she's good everybody <laughs> <laughs> and you know what i also saw speaking of being mavis trained when i saw mavis do what i'm about to share that you do for the first time i sat there and i said i want to be that medium I want to do that. And now you do it too. And that is you trust spirit so much that you, you don't say to your client, did they have red hair? You say, and I know they had red hair. 
right? Absolutely. Yeah. That Absolutely. I know you you own it because you honed your abilities, Lisa, to to say they're here, and I want you to know it. And that confidence that you deliver to your client that helps them open to the awareness that love never dies. It's a beautiful thing to witness. I have to give a hundred percent credit for that confidence to Jean Else because oh, really? she taught that, and her her and Mavis's teachings together it's what made all the difference. Trust that they will come. Trust that you can know. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, Jean and I are uh, working with this. I didn't say this with the shift network for a program. Jean's spearheading it. We haven't announced it yet. So I'm kind of letting the cat out of the bag, but Jean is Mavis's partner, her wife. And I mean, so much teaching together that they did. I didn't know she taught you that. I only learned it by watching Mavis and feeling what happens when the difference that words make just the difference between asking a question with doubt and saying and i know because we do absolutely and it's just like it's just like the young man showing me the rodeo i couldn't say oh well maybe he's not showing me a rodeo i i knew what he was showing me it was very clear so <laughs> yes i love it so while you're thinking of another story, let's multitask here because I want to come back and have you tell why the Derby was significant. Ah, uh, the Derby, the Derby. Goodness. This was a hat that the spirit you saw at 13 years old was wearing when you first saw him and pulling the covers over your head. I don't want to be seeing you. What's yeah. with the Derby? The Derby was significant and it's really probably won't make any sense to anyone other than me. But as I was trying to figure out my guide's name, um, and I just wanted validation. I knew what his name was. And I actually had another medium say, do you know your guide's name? And she had it written on a piece of paper. And oh, that cool. was impressive to me. That was Isabella Johnson. Mm -hmm. Um, and I always, my guide's name was Mo. I always called him Mo. And then that was my mother's nickname her whole life. So for a very long time, I thought I was talking to my mother, but then she came to me as Evelyn Joy, which is her name. And I said, well, then who's Mo that's that's helping me? And I learned his name is Maurice. And as I was learning more about Maurice, um, I was learning about his past mediumship. And as I was researching things about him, he, he has his own foundation and it is in Derby, England. And huh. I was like, huh. oh my gosh. And you end up learning from British teachers. Absolutely. Absolutely incredible British teachers. It's just, you know, it's like you say, Suzanne, it's the web. It's just all so magical. So magical. Even how I met you and, and. How was that? How'd that happen? We met at the very first Helping Parents Heal conference, actually. I, re I recall very vividly, I was standing by. Oh, we had to have met before that. That was only 20 years possibly did, but that was the first time I recall that you came up to me and um, you were so kind. And you said, I'd like to be friends. And I just thought, <laughs> oh, I'm so honored. Oh my goodness. But that's, that's how I remember the very first time. It was just, it was lovely. It was really very lovely. You're such an incredible. I'm going to swap seats from medium to mom no. right now. Yes, I am. You are <laughs> such an absolutely incredible, inspirational person. And I know that your path from your Navy career to where you are now is one of the most hundred influential people in the world was truly to open people truly to open people to their own awareness and their own awakening and that is indeed a shift in evolution a shift in humanity and as a as a mom with both my children in spirit and for the times when i did have such a heavy heart i want to thank you publicly well, thank you. I'm uh, like you, a woman on a mission. And as long as we keep that in the forefront, we'll just continue to do that. 
Mm. Thank you. Well, I'd like to be on your podcast someday and then you can say those things, okay? Because <laughs> that's coming too. Yeah, we got a book and a podcast. She doesn't know it yet, everybody. I'm just, you know. <laughs> Did you hear that, Rick? <laughs> yeah, I was just going to bring up Rick. So I can remember we came to Sedona and you have that, that second home in Sedona. Ty and I were traveling through town and we had dinner at mariposa restaurant and i remember sitting there and i could feel rick's unease because we're talking about mediumship and he just i could tell he just wasn't quite open to it and and you were a little concerned about that i believe you know because you were opening to things so how is it now indeed oh my gosh he's just so completely completely supportive of me now and in fact he's having his own experiences now with people in spirit and he's trusting himself and he's being divinely led and guided and he'll veer off onto a little project he's working on a project right now um with the granite mountain hot shots the 19 young men firefighters yes yeah yeah letting him go i don't know where he's being called to or what he's doing with that but um his support of me is just unsurpassed and i never could have imagined it and it was with what you opened the door telling him you and ty talking to him about um your feelings about mediumship and then of course elizabeth boisson was was just very instrumental in that as well at the helping parents heal conference where she asked him to take photographs well we yeah he's the official photographer for those conferences now and does such a great job but we were you and i were talking before the show that we're both so blessed with such supportive husbands i know that ty did not marry a medium and Absolutely. here we are and so it, i know that we're it, it's all meant to be you we we know that at the soul level they signed up for us <laughs> Oh, and us for them so grateful so grateful yeah absolutely. so i do you remember the instance where um i get these the daily messages that i post and those of you who don't know about my daily way app you want to definitely check that out right daily inspiration from spirit do you remember the time when your husband rick was having back problems oh you and ty had just come to sedona mm -hmm. Yep, and, and Rick was going to go lay some new stones on the patio in spite of his back problems. And the message, I didn't know that, the message from Sanaya came out about listening to your body. And the picture I was guided to choose were these two little statues that were identical to ones you have on your mantle at the house. I remember that really got his attention. Remember it that? really did. Do you have that photograph? Oh Nothing my God! Here right now, yeah, but I they have. were they were right there, and he read it on his own, and he got big eyes, and he was like, "Oh my goodness," because there there's just no denying that they're the little wooden artist artist uh, drawing figures that he has. He's he's very into the arts, so that was fabulous, Suzanne. Well, it's just that web showing itself again. So I asked for three stories. Do you have another one you can share with us? Because we oh, just oh my goodness, my goodness, celebrate the wonder. Oh, there's so many. Okay, I know which one. It just came. To, it just came to me, and I spoke of this at the last Helping Parents Heal conference. I was doing a reading for a woman in uh, Hawaii, a lovely mother, and. As I was trying to do my introduction at the beginning of a private reading, which is where I'll tell my my people I'm working with what they can expect in the reading. And I said, I'm sorry, I can't even get through my introduction. I have a young woman here and she's waving a toothbrush in my face. <laughs> and I said, she doesn't even want me to, she won't even let me get through this. And the mother just looked at me and tears start flowing. And her daughter had crossed, it had been 10 years. And she said, my daughter, when she was alive, she and I were in the bathroom. And we talked to each other about what sign we would give each other if we ever left. And she picked up her toothbrush and she said, I'll show you a toothbrush. And she said, I've had a toothbrush in my cup on my kitchen counter for 10 years. Oh waiting for that toothbrush to move. Oh. 
She said, I've told everyone, don't touch that toothbrush. Don't touch that toothbrush. Knowing her daughter would move the toothbrush. And that just moved my heart so oh. much because those are the things, those are the reasons I work in mediumship is because that mom knew they had prearranged before her daughter even crossed, which was out of, you know, it was not, it was not, she wasn't ill. They had no idea of this. It was just merely conversation. And so, so we just don't want everybody now to think that when you have a reading with a medium, you're going to get that sign though. <laughs> That's true. That's true. They may say something that you just don't even know, but some people think, oh, they're Googling me or, oh, this, I'm telling you the things that come out are, are things that you wouldn't, you wouldn't find on Google, little things that you're just not, you're just not going to know, but you will. And, know and you may get the things that are on Google because they're important about your life, but not because an ethical medium looked it up. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Wow. So are you full time doing this? Do you do many readings a week or how's that? How's your life? I am, I am doing it full time. Um, I do need to to keep some time in my day for my meditation and for my grounding and just trying to not keep my mind in. I love being in my right brain. I could sit and just talk to people in spirit all day long, but the IRS doesn't like that. And <laughs> so things like that, that, you know, I, I need to be sure my floor is swept and things like that. Um, yeah. It's a wonderful life. I'm with my children all the time. I'm incredibly blessed. Uh, just having the people that I've met along the way, the list is far too long and it is a web. I don't stand alone. There are some absolutely incredible evidential mediums out there who I call my friends. And, and of course, the people I've met that spirit has brought to me to put in touch and all the beloved people that work for helping parents heal and of course yourself and Ty. It is a web and, and that's one of the lessons the guides gave me lately is, you know, shower gratitude on everyone, everyone. And it makes such a difference for us to feel that connection. We're grateful to all of you for joining us today. Why do this if not just to share the love with each other? And we feel yours coming back at us. So parting words, Lisa, as we com perfectly complete this hour, what would you like people to know that you haven't already said? I would like people to know, um, as, as Suzanne has so perfectly and beautifully coined it, the awakened way is, is truly a shift from a heavy, a heavy heart to joy and to peace and to knowing that we, we do not die and our loved ones are with us and we can enjoy our life with them. That's right. And Lisa, as a mom who has both of your children across the veil, but knows they are still here with you and you're coming on here so beautifully and smiling and sharing your joy and your love with us, having been through that dark night of the soul, thank you for being this shining example that we move forward with those who have passed, not without them, right? Oh, absolutely. And thank you so much, Suzanne. Uh, it's a pleasure. All right, everybody. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you all for joining us today. I just feel blessed to be able to have these conversations that help all of us celebrate what the soul already knows. Truly messages of hope. We'll see you at the next episode. Bye-bye.